Right in 7 News, Australia facing a new fight as we lose billions every week. We're being told the jobs curve is the new battleground and Victorians are taking the biggest hit. New cases as the Melbourne meat plant cluster spreads what it means for the lockdown. Interstate airfares slashed to $19 to lure Australians when we start travelling again. The Dean Laidley photo scandal triggers a warning from AFL coaches. Breaking news on a football storm on the border. The details live. And see the act of mateship that brought an AFL legend to tears. Live from Melbourne, 7 News with Peter Mitchell starts now. Good evening. Australians are being told the coronavirus out outbreak is under control, but we're now fighting to beat a new curve, the battle to get a million people back to work. Victoria's taken the biggest hit on the jobs front during the lockdown. That's now costing the nation $4 billion a week. Put simply, Scott Morrison says we've saved lives but killed the economy. But we now need to get a million Australians back to work. That is the curve that we need to address. And Victoria has been hardest hit. I think that this recovery will more look like a tick than a V. Uh, that is, the downturn has been quite dramatic. We saw the long queues snaking around Centrelink offices. Now the devastating new figures are through. Almost a million Australians lost their jobs in just five weeks. Victoria's job numbers down 8.6%, the worst in the country and above the national average of 7.5. The accommodation and hospitality sector that was hardest hit in Victoria, down by more than a third. There's workers out of work and it's not looking very good to whether they'll be able to get it back. Chris Recky worked at the Moondog Brewery in Preston. It only opened six months ago, so employees there aren't eligible for government assistance. It's very disheartening to hear that they're already proceeding with talking about the reopening when they've left so many people behind and they never bothered to help out. The national economic fallout is severe, but could have been even worse, according to the federal government, which estimates five million workers will be saved by the JobKeeper program. While more than a million Aussies have tapped into their superannuation early, accessing $10 billion in funds. That's why it's so important the government get on with economic recovery instead of keeping us locked down further. Treasurer Tim Pallas was originally meant to deliver the state budget today. It's been pushed back until October at the earliest. The quickest way out of this problem is through it. We are not being motivated by economic dollars. Our number one consideration is the health, the welfare and well-being of the community. But it's a delicate juggling act. Just ask the PM whose focus has shifted to... Getting Australia back to work. Mike Amor, 7 News. The coronavirus cluster at a Melbourne abattoir is now shaping up as one of Australia's worst, with 11 new cases confirmed. The company says it's devastated, but insists that it did everything right. A family-run business at the centre of Victoria's biggest outbreak of COVID-19. Now the boss at Cedar Meads, in isolation at home, has recorded a video message about the crisis. I'm devastated that coronavirus has infected our people. From the moment we learnt of COVID-19, we took every possible step and consulted the experts to keep our people safe and protect our business. Cedar Meads first knew one of its workers tested positive on April the 27th. Two days later, three workers were known to be infected. By Saturday, the number had grown to eight. Sunday, 15, 34 yesterday. And today, confirmation, 45 cases are linked to the factory. For the past few days, our focus has been on taking care of our staff ensuring animal welfare and closing down the processing side of our business. Meat processing facilities have been hit hard by COVID-19. In the United States, 3% of all workers have tested positive. Experts say it's likely because they have to stand so close to each other and it should be a wake-up call to Victorians who are starting to relax about the threat of the virus. It only just further emphasises why we need to use our social distancing measures that we're doing at the moment. But the nation's chief medical officer says the outbreak has been expertly handled and is still considered a small cluster. That's the sort of thing that we know we can manage. Uh, we don't want to have any situation where there is broad transmission over a long period of time where, where you end up with several hundred cases and a large outbreak. It's also an urgent reminder not to go to work sick. Please do not 
leave your house if you're in any way unwell other than to get a COVID test. A lesson perhaps learned too late at Cedar Meets. I'm sure the whole community joins with me in wishing all my staff a speedy recovery. The Cedar Meats factory is now closed. All 350 workers are at home in isolation. They've all been tested along with their close contacts. So it is possible, of course, we will see even more cases over the next few days. But the health department is pretty confident it will be able to control this outbreak. And the company says its meats are completely safe. Mitch? Laurel Irving at Brooklyn. Thank you. Airlines are set to offer the cheapest fares in decades to lure travellers back to the skies. Qantas is flagging cut-price Melbourne to Sydney flights for just $19 and says there's light at the end of the tunnel. Grounded but getting ready for takeoff. Alan Joyce today revealing flight cancellations will continue until the end of July. The stand down of 25,000 Qantas staff extended for another month, but he's now eyeing a rapid recovery for the flying kangaroo. There is definitely, as we say, light at the end of the tunnel because I think the government is talking about domestic opening up sooner this year. And a major incentive to get passengers back in the air. For example, on Melbourne, Sydney, you could see $19 airfares and we'll still cover our cash costs on those flights. As far as the Australian domestic market is concerned, yes, there's a, there's a really upbeat potential. <laughs> At Brighton Beach, Virgin staff are flying the flag for their future. We just want to get back in those skies. Two weeks after going into administration, talks continue with potential buyers. Father of three A330 pilot Paul Isario, one of 8,000 staff, stood down. It's been a pretty tough um, emotional roller coaster for pretty much everyone in the whole industry. Um, just the uncertainty. As restrictions begin to ease around the country, travellers are cautiously returning to the skies. Virgin is operating 64 flights a week in Australia, with demand increasing. In the last week, Virgin Australia's passenger numbers are up 7%. Sydney Airport was busier than I thought it would be when I flew up a couple of weeks ago. Early signs these parked planes could soon be back where they belong, in the air. Tom Chadwick, 7 News. The Reserve Bank has kept official interest rates on hold at the record low level of 0.25%. Network finance editor Gemma Acton has the details. Gemma, it's likely rates will remain at this level for some time. Yes, Peter, that seems most likely. The RBA doesn't want to cut official interest rates to zero, and yet we're still a long way off reaching its goals for inflation and employment. It sees inflation turning negative in June and not reaching even the low end of its 2 to 3% inflation target range for the next few years. The Reserve Bank also expects the jobless rate to still be stuck around 7% by the end of next year. That's clearly far above the 4.5% jobless rate that we would need to see in order to hit its goal of full employment. We've seen five interest cuts now in less than a year. Now traders are expecting a quiet period ahead with no further changes for around another three years. Peter. Finance editor Gemma Acton, thank you. A health official has wiped away tears while giving evidence at the official inquiry into the Ruby Princess disaster. The special commission heard doctors would have boarded the cruise ship to perform a health assessment if patient logs had been properly completed. After 21 deaths and nearly 1,000 COVID-19 infections, Ruby Princess Commissioner Brett Walker had a question. To why I should not draw the conclusion that there has been a reprehensible shortcoming in New South Wales health in that regard. Myself and my colleagues at the Public Health Unit were working very hard on this. <clears throat> we did what we could. And if we could do it again, it would be very different. It was Kellyanne Ressler's job to liaise directly with the ship. She has no medical qualifications. While what? a ship is out at sea, I have, I have no jurisdiction over what they do. It's difficult for me in my role to insist on the practices of massive cruise ship companies myself. This image you have just given us of little old New South Wales and great big cruise companies, which, if I may say so, sounds both unrealistic and offensive. Also revealed another federal department was concerned with the Ruby Princess docking. At some stage, a call was made from a person who said they were from Home Affairs. Could 
responsible for the decision to allow 2,700 people to disembark the Ruby Princess. There have been 600,000 arrivals into Australia. Every level of government in Australia is now facing questions. I'm very uh, I'm concerned sorry. that you may have tried to mislead me with that answer. It was not my intention. Robert Obadia, 7 News. And a nursing home cluster has claimed the life of another resident, bringing the death toll to 16. New March House now threatens to overtake the Ruby Princess as the nation's worst coronavirus disaster. Health authorities are now investigating whether there was more than one source linked to the outbreak. And Victoria's Deputy Chief Health Officer has kept her job but has received social media training after an explosive tweet sparked calls for her resignation. New guidelines for the entire public service will now be brought in as a result of the scandal. Annalise Van Diemen has had a lot to say online, but today... ..not so much. We get nothing but silence. And that's starting to look a lot like defiance. The Deputy Chief Health Officer compared COVID to Captain Cook, tweeting both were invaders which decimated populations and created terror. Today, the Public Sector Commissioner ruled she was not in breach of the department's social media policy as there was no direct conflict of interest. The tweet made in a private capacity on her day off. She's doing an exceptional job. The government dismissing even the need for an inquiry. I certainly don't think that it's a matter worthy of any great comment or scrutiny. It's not rocket science to know you don't go out onto Twitter and put an extreme political view out there when you're supposed to be managing a public health crisis. While Dr Van Diemen won't be disciplined, she has been counselled. Her one tweet has also sparked a review of social media guidelines for the entire public service. Dr Van Diemen has now deleted Twitter from her government-funded phone, but she hasn't deleted the tweet that caused so much uproar. Tegan Dolling, 7 News. The Dean Laidley police photo scandal has triggered a warning from AFL coaches. They say the game needs to provide them with more support because some don't know how to ask for help. Dean Laidley joins a small but growing list of former AFL coaches who've struggled after footy with devastating consequences. The suicide of Danny Frawley, Mark Thompson fined for drug possession, James Hurd's overdose. I reckon they're the last bastion of hyper-masculinity. Um, bulletproof. Everybody else is, is prepared to acknowledge that they need help from time to time and uh, the coaches seem to me to be the least inclined to do that. Another former coach, Mick Malthouse, says the game takes a heavy toll. I can categorically tell you the number of coaches that I know that have come in and gone out of the game and I look at them and they're they, they age very, very quickly. They, they become old men quickly. The Coaches Association says support for coaches after football isn't great. When the time's up, um, our advice is make sure you uh, do everything you can to have a plan B, which is a meaningful way of paying the bills when footy finishes. Police tell us they're still investigating a senior constable accused of sending illegal photos of Dean Laidley in police custody. If he's found guilty, that police officer faces a fine, possibly jail, up to two years. Blake Johnson, 7 News. A woman may have been dead for several days before police found her body in a South Melbourne unit. Homicide detectives say the death is suspicious, but there is no ongoing threat. A company which specialises in cleaning residue from drug labs spent several hours at the address. A football storm is brewing up on the border with Albury Council looking to block Melbourne players from using the town as a lockdown base. Andrew McCormack is up on the border for us tonight and Andrew, Melbourne Storm's Albury experience could be over before it begins. Yeah, Mitch, quite extraordinary scenes. Uh, several disgruntled local councillors have called an extraordinary meeting tonight, concerned over the fact that uh, the Melbourne Storm players uh, should be denied the chance to use Albury as a training base. Uh, several Storm players, uh, just about the entire playing group and coaching staff have arrived here on the border town as they uh, look to stay in isolated green zones to prepare at least for the next week ahead of the scheduled restart of the NRL season on May 28. But several lo local councillors... Uh, in a meeting just got underway a short time ago, looking to vote to deny the storm the fact to train here with uh, several different reasons, including a double standard from uh, storm players getting and the team getting preferential treatment over local teams. 
Some people have lost their jobs and lost their businesses. I think it's a really unacceptable double standard to say that the rules apply to some and not to others. Our community are our prime concern. They will not be having contact with our community. They will be going to and from their locations by bus. So heading into the vote tonight, council sources suggested it is well and truly up in the air. It could go either way. Remarkably, nine councillors in the city of Albury could hold the, uh, the fate of the NR restart in their hands tonight. Mitch? Fascinating indeed. Andrew McCormack, thank you. Tim Watson joins us now with a look ahead to sport. And Tim, the AFL fixture has been thrown in the bin. That's right, Mitch. A fresh schedule will be released just in time for round two. We'll have live details ahead in sport. Also, why the wedding's off for a Pies defender with the AFL shutdown causing heartache for players. Living life on the edge as Pat Rafter and Ash Barty take to the skies to say thank you and how this footy star is keeping in shape in isolation. Mitch, all that and more coming up a little bit later. I know you love those stories. Thank you very much indeed, Tim. Next, inside a big police operation, see the blitz across Melbourne's southeastern suburbs as a task force swoops on 300 people wanted by the law. Also, new details on the staggering number of cases touched by the lawyer X scandal. After eight weeks in lockdown, families in Italy finally reunited. And later, top quality meat cuts for prices not seen since the 80s. A special family consumer report. Seven News, brought to you by Industry Super Funds. I suddenly realised we're all in this together. That feels especially true, given what's going on. It is good to know that our super will help us and our economy bounce back. And if you're with one of these, your super is invested in things that create jobs and keep Aussie businesses strong, delivering good long-term returns that benefit all of us. After all, we're all in this together. It's one of life's biggest decisions. This home means a lot to us. It's like our first home. This is where we want to start a family. Oh my God, I'm actually going to get upset about my <laughs> But what if it turned out to be your biggest mistake? This decision to buy this house was a bit of a snap decision on my part. Can they transform this dump into their forever home? Oh my God, stop it. House Rules, tonight, 7.30 on 7. At Rapidtune, we'll keep you moving with our range of services, from brakes, shocks to general repairs. We stock tyres from the best brands, are licensed air conditioning specialists and offer wheel alignments and servicing that will protect your warranty. Rapidtune, we'll keep you moving. The Australian Government is working hard to keep businesses in business and Australians in jobs. That's why we've introduced the JobKeeper payment. If you're a business severely impacted by the coronavirus, you'll receive a fortnightly payment of $1,500 for each eligible employee to cover their wages. For employees, it will allow millions of Australians to keep their job, including those who have been stood down. To find out more, visit australia.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. You don't give in. You don't give up. It's called Aussie spirit. And it takes spirit to get through times like these. It's what inspires us to help. Together we'll get through this. Search Toyota here to help. Head to Macca's right now if you're looking for a treat and get a creamy McFlurry for only $2 or a McValue family box for $24.95. For your Macca's run, contact free, we'll be here. I need you to give blood. Like story time depends on it. Like Saturdays depend on it. Like tomorrow depends on it. Your life might have changed, but for Australians like Eva, your blood donation is still as essential as ever. So please, book a donation with Lifeblood today. Can care be better at home? Someone from Medibank mentioned that there's a chance I can do rehab at home. I said, oh, how much extra is that going to cost? And they said, no, you've got it in your hospital cover. It just was fantastic for me. Tasty, affordable and delicious. What's for dinner in the next break with Coles?
Police are using the lockdown to round up hundreds of criminals on the run from the law. They're raiding homes across Melbourne's southeast in a major operation to bring in high-risk offenders considered likely to commit more serious crimes. Cornered crooks, home delivered. For some of these repeat offenders, the COVID lockdown is making police work easier, obeying the rules and staying at home. This presents an ideal opportunity to actually reduce those numbers and to minimise that community harm by arresting these people or at least presenting them before the courts. For hundreds of others, it's still been a game of cat and mouse, doing whatever they can to outfox the force, but now their luck finally running out, handcuffed and marched out of their hideouts. Essentially, they're, they're flaunting the system. They're uh, thumbing their nose, not only at the community, but at us. Over the past two months, 300 repeat offenders have been tracked down as part of Operation Master, the blitz targeting Melbourne's southeast. Whether it be from theft of cars, breaking into your house, um, committing street arm robberies, etc., uh, they're the people essentially that we don't want on the streets. The most serious offenders were wanted over multiple crimes and still posing a threat to the community. 30 of those arrested were remanded in custody, but dozens of others have been bailed. The operation is not totally focused on Melbourne's southeast. There have been offenders and suspects identified interstate and overseas. <coughs> operation Master is ongoing, with more offenders added to the wanted list. Cameron Bow, 7 News. A Geelong man has been jailed for 27 years after killing his housemate with a hammer. Nicholas Munn bludgeoned his friend Jason Fry to death after the 41-year-old spent rent money that Munn had given him. The killer covered up his crime for six days until police found Mr Fry's body in the back of his car. The Nicola Gobbo scandal continues to deepen. More now from Chief Court reporter Sharnel Vella. And Sharnel, the lawyer ex Royal Commission, needs more time to unravel this mess. Well, Mitch, the inquiry was meant to wrap up in December last year, but they've now been given an extension to November this year. But it's feared now that more than 1,200 cases may have been tainted by Informer 3838. The Commission has received almost 150,000 document bundles, some which run for thousands of pages. On one day alone, Victoria Police sent the Commission 38 hours of intercepted phone recordings of Ms Gobbo. The Commission has already cost the state $28 million and today the government agreed to an additional $11.5 million to get that report finished by November. The Royal Commission hearings will recommence in two days time Mitch, but they'll do so entirely online of course observing those social distancing measures. Mitch. Chanel Vella, thank you. Jane Bunn joins us now for an early look at the weather. And Jane, 10 out of 10 today, it turned into a beautiful <laughs> afternoon. Oh, Mitch, it was lovely, wasn't it? Much nicer than recent days, even though it was eerie you know, at first in that early fog. Construction workers saw first what a nice day it was going to be as the fog cleared southwards at about 9am. The city began the day on 8, but the coldest spots were Scoresby and the airport. The sunshine that followed was lovely, not a cloud, and the winds were light. The city reached a top of 19, but all these spots in the east hit 20 degrees. We're now dry until the end of the week. Bright sunshine at times, a bit of cloud at others. Hopefully the clear skies coincide with shooting stars from Halley's Comet. It is meant to be one of the best meteor showers of the year, but you do need to get up early, best viewed before dawn. I'll have more after sport, Mitch. Thanks, Jane. We'll see you then. Here's something you'd never expect to say, why parking inspectors are good news. Next, they're being sent back into the city by popular demand. The details are ahead. Why this $40 million drone represents an aviation high for Australia. It's never been heard before, but a Beatles song is set to go under the hammer for charity. And see how friendship overcame the lockdown in a moving tribute to an AFL legend. Who is it? I don't know. It's Tane, Ari's brother. I don't think they like each other too much. He's a bit of a troublemaker. He's about to arrive. Some will love it, some won't. I told you to stay away. Yeah, but you're not calling the shots now, are you? It's all that heavy Who's your new friend? 
He's no friend. I didn't come here to make trouble. I came here to make sure my family was okay. Tane acts like he's a good guy, but he's not. Walk away, Tane. I ain't going anywhere. He's got the whole bay talking. Maybe I'll see you around, yeah? Yeah. Hey, babe. Away you go, you gonna... Home and away. Weeknights on 7. Hi guys, Michael Weldon here with another What's For Dinner and today we've got a special one. I've got my mate Ryan here. Now Ryan and I have been doing some cooking videos for the Stephanie Alexander Kitchen Garden Foundation to give you a bit of inspo for some dishes you've got to cook at home with kids, haven't we? Yeah, but tonight we're gonna make pizza. Now this recipe is the perfect recipe for the kids to get in the kitchen and cook this week for Mother's Day. To make our dough, first of all, we've got 300 grams of bread flour. Now, right, we're going to go into there, flour. You grab that fork. We're going to then add some yeast into our warm water. So we're going to whisk it together. I'm going to add a quick pinch of salt, a drizzle of olive oil. That's right, it's mixing down to flour. <laughs> we're going to leave that for two minutes just to let it bloom. I'm going to quickly dice up an onion because we're going to make a quick tomato sauce. And I'm literally going to use three ingredients, four ingredients. Onion, tomato, olive oil and salt. So we want to chop our onion nice and fine. Do you want to chuck some olive oil in there? Once our oil's hot, we're going to go in with our onion. You want to slowly stir that. And we'll just add a little pinch of salt to that as well to help those soften. We just added some passata or some tinned tomatoes. Our yeast is activated. Now, do you want to do your mix again? This time we're going to mix the flour and the yeast together. <laughs> That's it. So we're just going to bring it together until it forms a little bowl. I'm gonna put that to one side for about 20 minutes. Look at that dough. It started to double in size and puff up. Then we give that a knee just to bring it all together. So we're gonna put our dough into a tray. We're gonna wrap it with cling wrap and let that prove for about two to three hours. I made some ahead of time. Now it's time to make our pizza. Start at one end and just push around the outside and then we transfer our pizza to the paddle. What's next? Sauce. Sauce. Can you put that in the middle for me? One spoon right in the middle. Now this is the best thing about pizza, right? You choose your own adventure. I'm just gonna go margarita with parmesan and mozzarella. I like basil, so I'm gonna put all the green stuff on mine. Let's go to the oven. Okay, this, you step down. Whoa! All right, look at that. Pizza's ready. How does that smell? Pizza. And there we have it. That is our recipe for margarita pizza. We made our own dough. For this recipe, check out coles.com.au. And if you wanna get in the kitchen and do some cooking with your kids, check out the Stephanie Alexander Kitchen Garden Foundation website. Happy eating, guys. Australia has unveiled the first new military aircraft to be designed here in more than 50 years. The unmanned aircraft cost $40 million to build. It has a range of more than 3,500 kilometres and will start ground trials soon. Parking inspectors are about to start patrolling city streets again. Nick McCallum has an update and, Nick, it's a good sign life is returning to the city. Peter, in March, parking restrictions were lifted in areas with green signs in the CBD. That, of course, meant the parking inspectors, those dreaded grey ghosts, uncharacteristically, showed a bit of mercy. But all of that is going to change on Monday. They'll be back on patrol. That, of course, means we will have to start paying for parking again. We'll have to abide by time limits. Now, all of that is because, at the moment, so many people are parking in spots all day and traders are complaining because there are not enough spots for their customers and for deliveries. So here's what the Lord Mayor had to say. The free parking in our green zones has been taken up as we expected but by people parking all day and we've lost that turnover and the opportunity for people to come in, do their business and leave again. But there will be exemptions. Some 8,000 hospital and emergency service workers will be allowed to park wherever they want to, free of charge, all day if they need to. But they will need to get special stickers from their employers, Peter. Nick McCallum in the city, thank you. Scott Morrison has joined world leaders in a fundraising blitz, pledging billions of dollars towards a coronavirus vaccine. But the challenge for some superpowers is shaping up to be how they fight the pandemic without fighting each other. 
Despite its internal divisions, the European Union brought the world together. Leaders from more than 40 countries pledging $12.5 billion to develop tests, treatments and a vaccine. Canada, France, Turkey, Japan and Australia now we go to down under, joining the virtual summit. Today, Australia is pledging 352 million Australian dollars towards this global effort. Not quite global. Russia and the United States didn't participate. The race to discover the vaccine to defeat this virus is not a competition between countries, but the most urgent shared endeavour of our lifetimes. It's humanity against the virus. Almost a dozen human trials are now underway, including two here in the UK. Oxford scientists believe they'll know by June if there's works, but even with an effective vaccine, creating enough global doses is the challenge. In the meantime, across Europe, the delicate balancing act continues. Traffic returning, shops opening, freedoms and finally, family. <laughs> Grandparents reunited with their five-year-old granddaughter after two long months apart. In London, Sarah Greenolch, 7 News. And a Melbourne vaccine trial has received a $10 million boost thanks to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Researchers are testing whether being immunised against tuberculosis boosts the body's immune system. We do have to wait till enough healthcare workers have been exposed to coronavirus to be able to compare whether those who have received the TB vaccine have less disease than those who have not received this vaccine. An extra 8,000 healthcare workers will receive the vaccine across Australia, Spain and the Netherlands. In the US, a store security guard has been shot dead for telling a shopper to wear a face mask. It's the latest act of violence in a state where lockdown frustration is boiling over. Days after protesters stormed the state's capital. Murder in Michigan. She had gone to the store. She had a daughter with her. The daughter did not have a mask. A security guard shot dead for refusing a customer entry without a mask. In this case, there's just no excuse for somebody to take this kind of an action over this kind of an issue. I can't fathom one. I'm just suffocating. I feel like a knife is in my chest. A neighbouring suburb, another police investigation after a man wiped his nose on a store assistant's shirt when she asked him to wear a mask. New government modelling obtained by the New York Times projects America's daily death toll will reach 3,000 come June, hitting almost 135,000 deaths by early August. This as businesses across the country reopen. From today, restaurants in Nebraska and Florida, bars in Montana, offices in Colorado. By the end of the week, California will be partially reopened too. The governor giving retailers the green light to offer curbside pickup, but conceding this next phase could come at a cost. We recognise as we begin to modify, behaviour is modified and possible community spread may occur. In Los Angeles, Ashley Mullaney, 7 News. The two surviving Beatles are auctioning off an unreleased track to raise money for coronavirus charities. Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr wrote Angel in Disguise together in 1992. The only known copy exists on cassette. The unheard demo is expected to fetch up to $40,000. A lockdown surprise has reduced AFL great Doug Hawkins to tears, thanks to his best mates. They came together for a touching tribute to the Bulldogs great from Braybrook. Doug Hawkins couldn't have a party, so his family organised a surprise cavalcade. Car after car, family and friends, an emotional isolation celebration. I had no idea. This is unbelievable. The cars and gifts kept coming. The new trailer for my birthday. That'd be sick if Dougie. <laughs> Back at work in traffic management, the Hawk still in awe. It was pretty special, mate. Yeah, it was, it was really. I was emotional, um, and to share a good share a birthday with another good mate of mine, the old Dipper. Between me and Dipper, we speak six different languages. Not one's English. <laughs> he played his heart off the field as on it 
but shows no signs of slowing down. Steve, uh, can you believe that? 60 years of age? Amazing. Um, I've got a lot of mates from the early days at Footscray said I, I wouldn't make 40. They were wrong. Famous in his TV days for mispronouncing one word, in his senior years, he's still working on it. The word is uh, manure. Manu manure. <laughs> still stuffed it up. Manure. <laughs> Mark Stevens, 7 News. Happy birthday, Dougie. There's a new threat for children during the lockdown. Next, it's dangerous and it's putting Victorian children in hospital. The details are coming up. Also, a message for older Victorians. Help to stay healthy in the lockdown. See the moment four twisters touch down in unison. And the high price of the high life in LA for Harry and Meghan. Very occasionally, someone comes onto the stage and you think, they are born to be a superstar. Her voice will have the entire audience on their feet. This is what the world has been waiting for. Brand new Britain's Got Talent, Wednesday 7.30 on 7. At RapidTune, we'll keep you moving with our range of services, from brakes, shocks to general repairs. We stock tyres from the best brands, are licensed air conditioning specialists and offer wheel alignments and servicing that'll protect your warranty. RapidTune, we'll keep you moving. Their doors might be closing, but they're always open on eBay. Stay home, shop online and help support 40,000 Aussie retailers. Every day, we work to make our network stronger and more reliable. So even when we can't be close, we can still be connected together. With Light and Easy, you can enjoy delicious, healthy meals with the safety of their contactless delivery service. In fact, Light and Easy has recently been rated Australia's number one healthy meal delivery service for customer satisfaction. Order today. At Nature's Own, we know that fatigue can be either physical or mental. Nature's Own Sleep and Energy Range can help you improve the quality of your sleep or support energy production throughout your day. You bet it's hard. Nature's Own. Be body smart. It's LTV for me. It's LTV for me. More and more people are saying it's LTV for me. Because the LTV T64 by 4 diesel is from just 27,490 drive away. And eligible businesses may be able to claim the government instant asset write off. Hurry, offer ends May 31. You can open it now. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, thanks, love. Look what Amy got me. V Mum's instant favourite with instant scratches. Have you two muted? In with thousands of the world's best movies, drama, kids entertainment and now with Netflix included. Foxtel all in one place. Yours. Parents are being warned about a potentially deadly danger lurking in some children's toys. Doctors say ball magnets are just as dangerous as button batteries after one toddler almost died. Imogen Ferguson and her four-year-old sister were left for just a few seconds, but it was long enough to almost kill her. Oh, I cried and cried, yeah. I felt like I felt pretty guilty. Tegan discovered her 18-month-old in pain and rushed her to hospital, where it was revealed she swallowed dozens of small magnets. Yeah, they'd done x-rays and showed that there was 32 in her tummy and her yeah, bowel and that, so... Imogen underwent emergency surgery and is expected to make a full recovery, but hers is becoming a worryingly common story. In the last three weeks we've had four significant cases and three of these has required major surgery with multiple holes in the bowel. One toddler almost died. What happens is you have a magnet in one area of the bowel and another magnet in another area 
and they attract each other and burn a hole through. With more children at home during lockdown, doctors are urging parents to be extra vigilant to prevent preschool age children getting access to harmful toys. We're concerned that a child may die from this and we'd like to see that not happen. Health experts are now calling on safety regulators to crack down on the activity toys as they did for button batteries. And I think this particular toy is a serious hazard, particularly to younger children. It could have been a lot, lot worse. Like we got out of it pretty lucky. Cassie Zovos, Seven News. To breaking news now, and a second police officer has been suspended in the wake of the Dean Laidley photo scandal. The male senior constable is expected to be charged. He and another officer are accused of taking and then leaking photos of Laidley during his police interview on Saturday night. Older Victorians are being warned they'll suffer long-term health issues if they don't stay active during the lockdown. A website's been launched showing how simple exercises around the house can help prevent injury. For 75-year-old Mike, the only thing that eases the pain in his lower back is exercise. Who enjoys doing exercises? But, yeah, well, I know I've got to do them. Walking with friends and Pilates helped him manage the discomfort, but since the lockdown, he's had to give up both. So the grandfather's using the Safe Exercises at Home website. It's been developed by a team of physiotherapists. Worried seniors will struggle to exercise in isolation. If you aren't as active as you normally are, you can get reduced function, so that means that you're less able to do the normal types of things you do during the, your days. And it's also associated with an increased risk of falls. The site caters to everyone, including those who feel unsteady, walk slowly or use a walking aid. They should try to be active for five minutes an hour, stand up from the chair ten times or march up and down on the spot. Only a quarter of older Australians were doing enough exercise to meet national guidelines before lockdown. It's hoped this website will help them get into the habit of daily activity so they can continue once restrictions are lifted. In the end, if you don't do any exercise, you're going to pay for it. Jodie Lee, 7 News. Four huge twisters have ripped through a town in Mexico, leaving a trail of destruction. The tornadoes formed simultaneously before touching down. Storm systems like this are common in the area, so locals were prepared and no one was injured. Harry and Meghan have reportedly set their eyes on a multi-million dollar LA mansion. The sprawling home is worth $25 million with six bedrooms and six bathrooms. Their potential neighbours would include Tom Hanks and Ben Affleck. The AFL has reworked its fixture. Tim Watson, this includes round two. Mitch, the schedule has been totally rejigged. We'll have live details next, plus how the AFL shut down has forced a loved-up magpie to postpone not one, but two weddings. Melbourne Storm forced to make changes in Albury ahead of the NRL restart. Two Grand Slam champions tackle their fear of heights to say thank you. And a grand finish to the most famous steeplechase race in the country. Truck. It's not the end of the world. What the truck? It's the brand new season of Outback Truckers. And it's our wildest adventures yet. Tonight, 8.30. New truck heads are gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not all. They're bringing along their brand new mates. Meet the Aussie Desert Collectors. You won't believe the treasures that we unearth in the middle of the desert. Magic. It's good and fun for the whole trucking family. Tonight from 8.30 on mates. Their doors might be closing, but they're always open on eBay. Stay home, shop online, and help support 40,000 Aussie retailers. Telstra's smart modem cleverly switches Wi-Fi frequencies when you're further away for a strong connection to maximise your range. Experience better Wi-Fi with Telstra. Winter is on its way and it's time to back your body's defences with Blackmore's Bio C1000 at Chemist Warehouse. This high dose and convenient one a day tablet boosts your vitamin C to help reduce the severity and duration of common cold symptoms. Now with a new look but the same great product, 
Try Blackmore's Bio C1000 150 tablets, just $21.99 at Chemist Warehouse. Start supporting a healthy immune system today. Live, look, feel well at Chemist Warehouse. The MS Dream Home Lottery is already over 50% sold. Because how many can win a $1.5 million grand prize? Don't care. That's right. Hurry and get your tickets today. Rest easy with me as we dream. Advocate, so everyone can rest easy. Rest easy with me. At Rapid Tune, we'll keep you moving with our range of services from brakes, shocks, electricals, and all your general mechanical repairs under the one roof. We perform all the vehicle services that you need to protect your new car warranty, as well as any mechanical repairs. Every Rapid Tune outlet is also a licensed air conditioning specialist. We stock a range of tyres from the best brands at competitive prices, as well as balancing and wheel alignments using the latest state of the art equipment. Book online today at rapidtune.com.au. Rapid Tune, we'll keep you moving. Shut up and take my money. Because you can't get to the gym, we'll bring the gym to you. Booper customers get three months access to 28 by Sam Wood on us. Booper. Because life happens. Learn more at booper.com.au. Welcome back. The AFL is putting the finishing touches to its comeback plan with a June restart now looming. Live to Chief Football Reporter Mark Stevens And steve -O, the clubs were briefed today. They were, Tim. The league updated the, the key heads of footy at every club today on several issues, but mainly no answers on the start dates we're all waiting for, but a strong remainder on protocols and restrictions. Hubs now very unlikely, but club heavies told the rules around fly in, fly out and the fixture will be extremely tough, very rigid. So some warnings today to clubs. That fixture will be released later this month and it will be totally new. The league had told us rounds two to four would remain. That's scrapped, all new from here. And it will be reasonably traditional Thursday to Sunday with a few Wednesday games thrown in. The Geelong coach, well, he wants the full block of 16 games announced all at once. It is a strange situation to say, OK, we're going to play 16 weeks and this is what it looks like. But then have to turn it on its head halfway through, I think. While well, I said equity is not the most important thing for the AFL, I mean, it has to be pretty close to the top of the list. And I'm not sure how you can do that um, effectively if you're changing the fixture on the run. Now, the draft will definitely happen this year. Sources tonight say it could happen in the days leading into Christmas. So some early Christmas gifts for draftees. So late December, you can just about lock that in. There are also hopes now that uh, as many as 10 under-18 NAB League games could be slotted in at some stage this year, plus a smaller championship. So the good news for those recruiters is they'll get to see some more of those young stars, Tim. Thanks, Steve. -O. The ramifications of the pandemic and the AFL shutdown aren't just causing major problems for football's livelihoods, but also their personal lives. Among the hardest hit, Collingwood defender Jack Madgen and his heartbroken fiance. Collingwood defender Jack Madgen and his American fiance Heidi had done all the running round, planning two weddings on either side of the globe. Now both are off. We'll get married. Eventually, uh, I hope. <laughs> she still loves me by the end of this. Yeah, it was just a little bit of a heartbreak, I think, just because of the amount of planning that went in. They were meant to tie the knot in the AFL off-season in mid-October in Heidi's hometown in Mississippi before another celebration in the Barossa Valley. But with the league's fixture pushed back, they've been forced to pull the pin with no refunds. Once they finally announced that it was postponed, I think it was just a huge... Um, like drop on our shoulders that it actually was going to happen and we had to cancel everything. If we can get through this self-isolation, I think we yeah. can get through anything. They met in the States. Jack was playing college basketball. Heidi was swimming. And she'll marry into one of Australia's sportiest families. Like Jack, his brother Ben played basketball overseas and in the NBL for the Phoenix, while his sister Tess won silver at the World Championships for the Opals. She's probably the best athlete of the family. His uncle, Fitzroy great Matt Brandell, got him to trial at Collingwood, and he'll never forget his AFL debut playing on Buddy Franklin. He looked at me and sort of like smirked and said, like, you should have stuck to basketball. And I was like, they're like 
can't believe he even knows who I am sort of thing. Like. <laughs> With the start and finish date of the AFL season still up in the air, the couple has decided to scrap wedding plans for this year and focus on Hawaii 2021. Sean Salvi, 7 News. There are fresh developments tonight as Melbourne Storm players arrived in Albury for their training camp. The City Council has just denied Storm permission to train on the local oval, meaning they'll need to reassess plans ahead of the restart. We're really about getting the game back underway um, on the 28th of May and, and being in the best condition we can be to, to start the show again. The NRL is hopeful of restarting the season on May 28. Aussie tennis world number one Ash Barty and Pat Rafter have taken the game to new heights while showing their appreciation and support for frontline healthcare workers during the pandemic. It was really incredible to come into the to one of the COVID wards and just to see how it all works and, and how it's sectioned off. And there are a lot of people, um, a lot of unsung heroes that, that go unnoticed at the moment. Hopefully they had plenty of tennis balls. Jockey Stephen Pateman is tonight in hospital after a fall at Warrnambool. It took some shine off the traditional jumps carnival, including the grand annual over 5,500 metres. But we're seeing history here. This is five grand annuals for the favourite son, Seymour. Normally there's sort of 12,000 people here, buddy, <laughs> yelling, but uh, and mum would be sitting up there in the stands doing 15 laps of the rosary beads, but um, <laughs> I'm sure she still is at home. Trainer Kieran Ma won his first grand annual 10 years ago. Disgraced swim star Sun Yang is appealing his career-ending ban in a last-ditch bid to make next year's Tokyo Olympics. The Olympic champion was given an eight-year suspension in February after vials of his blood were destroyed during a drug test in 2018. Sun hopes to have the ban overturned by the Swiss Federal Court on technical grounds. And this is one of the more impressive examples we've seen of improvisation from an athlete while in lockdown. NFL star Ty Johnson has posted videos to social media showing him pulling a four-wheel drive as part of his training routine. The Detroit Lions running back is regarded as one of the fastest players in the NFL and with explosive power like this, Mitch, it's pretty easy to see why apparently the handbrake was on too. That's all in sport. <laughs> Good to see he kept his helmet on. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Dining out is off the table, but it doesn't mean you can't enjoy restaurant-quality food at home. Restaurants and cafes have been forced to close, meaning top cuts of meat are being sold at reduced prices. It's a big part of so many grocery lists and now more affordable. We're getting some products as cheap as we've ever seen them, like back to the 70s style prices. With restaurants and cafes closed, there's an oversupply of premium cuts. A drop in demand means a drop in prices. Because they had volumes of it and nowhere to move it. From premium beef cuts. My fillet is usually about $50 to $60 a kilo. At the moment we can sell it between $30 and $40. Uh, so it's a saving of about 30%. To poultry and pork. This week we got chicken breast on at 4 99 Those prices are from the 70s. You know, pork, pork four-quarter chops at 4 99 It's just crazy prices. The panic buying has stopped and shelves are no longer stripped bare, so supermarkets can offer discounts too. From tomorrow, Coles will drop the price of its chuck casserole steak from $16 a kilogram to $14. And from Friday, chicken drumsticks will come down to $4 a kilo. Now more than ever it's important to lower the cost of living and we are doing that through these price cuts. Woolworths is matching that discount on Chuck State. So there'll be some buys, really, really good buys over the next couple of weeks. Louisa Cheatley, 7 News. Jane is next with the forecast. And, Jane, how does it look tomorrow? Well, Mitch, today, absolutely perfect. From tomorrow, the wind picks up and there's a bit of cloud. But staying dry, the details are next. Hello tonight on the latest from 7 News, back in action, but which businesses will return to normal first? The Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, joins me. The US is also reopening, but are they ready? Live to Washington DC and the greatest show off Earth. Why a meteor shower tonight will be more impressive than any other. Those stories and every breaking development tonight on the latest from 7 News. 
It's one of life's biggest decisions. This decision to buy this house was a bit of a snap decision on my part. Can they transform this dump? Tamara and me totally deserve the house of their dreams. Into their forever home? Oh my God, stop it. House Rules, tonight, 7.30 on 7. At RapidTune, we'll keep you moving with our range of services, from brakes, shocks to general repairs. We stock tyres from the best brands, are licensed air conditioning specialists and offer wheel alignments and servicing that will protect your warranty. RapidTune, we'll keep you moving. Centrum provides multiple health benefits in just one tablet. Centrum, complete from A to Zinc. If you're a small business, you've probably got a lot of questions right now, which is why you should speak to a professional accountant who's trained in planning and cash flow management strategies. For further support, contact a professional accountant today. Mum, wherever you are, today is still all about you. This year more than any year, it's the thought that counts. A personalised gift designed with love. The tech she needs to stay in touch. The perfect way to start her day. Or keep her comfy and warm at night. Find the perfect gift for mum at Harvey Norman. Our spacious stores are open. Or shop online and we can deliver direct to mum's door. This Mother's Day, make it all about her at Harvey Norman. A lot of us are spending more time at home. Ow. Using a lot more electricity and internet. <coughs> Unfortunately, mm. iSelect can't help with your naked partner walking past your big presentation. But we could help shrink those household bills. Now's the time to compare, select and save with iSelect on 13 19 20. It's the perfect time to get cosy with Winter Home Essentials from Maya. With 40% off selected quilts, pillows, protectors and blankets. And 40% off when you buy two or more items of loose cookware. Maya, my store. Controversy here in the forgotten grocery bag lifting. Russia disqualified. Unexpected item in the bagging area. He tried to put that Evo through as a brown onion and got busted. Ready for any challenge. Battery power. Made by Still. Only from your local Still dealer. He's about to arrive. Some will love it. Some won't. I ain't going anywhere. Home and away. Weeknights on 7. Hello again. Fog made for an eerie start to the day, but it cleared to reveal bright sunshine. A light northerly wind let it warm up a few degrees. We started on 8 ahead of a top of 19. It's now dropped to 15 and a half. While we're stuck at home, parts of Victoria are showing a lot of autumn colour and what great weather to appreciate their trees at the most colourful. It was as cold as one in Ballarat at first. Wangaratta and Hopeton were two degrees. Then a few spots reached 19. It was sunny all day, then high clouds started to come into the west late afternoon. We'll see more of that tomorrow. High pressure has moved into just the right spot to bring us sunshine and Sydney showers. There is a band of rain and thunderstorms in the west of the country and they'll be hit by another one of those tomorrow while the high pressure system moves out to our east. That front peaks over in the west so it just slides over us but the next one in behind it will peak over here. So the front slides through later Thursday, early Friday but this is all it does to us. Showers over the southwest and up on the ranges. The rest 
Torres Strait dry, including Melbourne. The next front hits us directly, so that'll have more of an effect. On Saturday, we're plunged back into wintry showers and alpine snow. But this one isn't quite as cold as what we saw last week, and it doesn't last as long. So the rainfall totals are smaller. The northwest, western Melbourne and east Gippsland will be seeing hardly anything at all. But the southwest, western Gippsland and the ranges could see 10 to 25 millimetres. Now, the biggest fall last time was more than 200 millimetres. So, yes, this is a burst of wet weather, but a lot less than last time. Around the nation tomorrow, Perth's gusty winds and wintry showers will slowly ease. Sunshine returns to Sydney while showers affect Brisbane and Cairns. It's dry all through the southeast. To Victoria, we've got fogs in the southeast, then all dry. It's cool to mild in a moderate to breezy northerly. Parts of the north will rise up and over 20. We've got sheets of high cloud overhead, but that lets lots of sun shine through. Closer in and we have lots of sunshine tomorrow, but not quite as nice as today. The northerly wind becomes breezy and there's a sheet of high cloud blocking some of that sun. The city starts at 11, a top of 19, it is mostly sunny. To the eight-day outlook, the warmest day is Thursday, but there's gusty winds and we've still got that bit of high cloud overhead. On Friday, 19 degrees, still in a northerly wind, it's sunny in the morning. Saturday is the wintry one, five millimetres in the west, up to 10 in the east, gusty showers moving through. The chance of those in the southeast on Sunday, otherwise dry on Monday. 19 tomorrow, 21 Thursday, mostly sunny, Mitch. Not great for Mother's Day. Thank you, Jane. And that's the way it is this Tuesday, the 5th of May. Thanks for your company. For now, from the Seven News team, good night.